Well, hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we'll be talking about the structure of the periodic table. It's Welcome back. It's time to jump on into the computer. Come on! And here it is. The periodic table of elements. And I gotta say, this truly is a thing of beauty. Alright, so first question. Why is this called the periodic table? Well, a period is simply a repeating pattern. It is a cycle. And as you go through every row, that pattern repeats over and over and over again. So the periodic table is really nothing more than just a giant pattern that repeats every time you start over. So hence the reason the rows are actually called periods. And the period numbers that you see over here on the left, these represent the, uh, the energy levels. And the numbers across the top, these represent the group numbers, right? So every column on here is called a group and the group numbers represent the valence electrons, which means that you could pick out any of these elements and simply by its position in the periodic table, you can identify the number of energy levels and the number of valence electrons. Also, just a little interesting trivia to point out, you see these two rows down at the bottom, they actually fit right here in this little gap, because you notice barium to lutetium is 56 to 71, well, so where, where do those elements go? Well, they're right down here, 57 through 70. Um, and the reason why the periodic table is designed this way to have these two rows at the bottom, it's actually a very practical reason because we just wanted to be able to print the periodic table on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It's that simple. If we actually put it right there in that little spot, we'd have to print it on legal size paper. And it was just decided, no, nah, we don't want to do that. We want eight and a half by 11. So there you go. So that's why these two rows are down here at the bottom. Okay, now the periodic table itself is actually split into three main categories. They are the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. And they're all separated by this little staircase line right here. Now I'm actually going to start with the nonmetals, simply because, well, they're or less of them. So the nonmetals is pretty much anything to the right of the staircase. So helium here, carbon through neon, phosphorus through argon, selenium through krypton, iodine and xenon, and radon. And lest we forget, there's actually one other nonmetal, and that is hydrogen right over there. Okay. Now the metals are everything to the left of that staircase. So lithium, beryllium, sodium, magnesium, also aluminum, and then potassium all the way through gallium, rubidium through tin, cesium through bismuth, and then pretty much everything on the seventh row that has been discovered up to this point. And then we shall not forget our metals down here on the bottom. Okay, so those are metals. Then the metalloids, pretty much everything else, are the elements that have, uh, or that share a border with the staircase, with the exception of aluminum. So boron, silicon, germanium and arsenic, antimony and tellurium, polonium and acetine. All right, so those are the three main categories. And several of these groups or families, as they're sometimes called, have very specific names. So let's go ahead and mark those down right now. So group 1A, with the exception of hydrogen, these right here, these are called the alkali metals. Group 2A, right here, is called the alkaline earth metals. Next up are the transition metals. So that's all of these B group elements over here. And we also include some of these over here that are technically in the A groups, but they behave just like transition metals. And more on that later. And let's also not forget our two rows down here at the bottom. These are also 
uh, transition metals. Group 7A are called the halogens, so that's these elements all right here. And then last and most certainly not least, we have group 8A, which is called the noble gases. So those all right there. Now in the next video we'll talk about the specifics of those families, the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, and all that lovely goodness. All right, thank you guys. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, you can either comment below or send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. While you're at it, please hit that subscribe button and join us on this adventure. I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. So we'll like we